Men. No, you actually wrote a word. Let me see. Fly. You actually spelled Miami. Huh? You actually spelled Miami. My, my Emmy? Yeah. Let's talk treating people how you want to be treated. What's good, y'all? I'm Lonnie Appleton. If you have a couple of minutes, I have a couple of messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. All right, 80s babies. So this is coming from two separate perspectives. One, matching energy. Two, making people feel comfortable. One of the most disrespectful things you could do to a person, in my opinion, is not hold a door for them. I know I'm putting a lot of emphasis on holding a door, but if you see me right behind you and you open it just enough for you to slide through and then just let it close, you're a rude mother And that's what happened yesterday when we went to the store. The lady in front of us held the door just enough for her to get in and then she scrolled right on through. Myself and all three of my children would have definitely held the door for her. Y'all saw the video where my three-year-old Caden was holding the door for the man? We have basic etiquette. Basic human decency. Treating people how we want to be treated. And it was my initial response to match her energy. Oh, this what we doing? Then let's go. Because I could be ruder than a rude rude. Just call me a rude boy. Okay, 80s babies. So check out the cashier lady is kind of in her thing. Kind of like, yeah, I'll be over there in a second. And her energy was... <clears throat> and my natural reaction was you like... <clears throat> But I checked myself and I said, am I going to disconnect myself from source behind her? And I don't know what she's going through. She could be having a crap day. We were at the Goodwill, so I know she don't make no money. Does anybody really make any money? Do better, America. It was in that moment that I decided I'm not going to match her energy. I'm going to maintain my space that's necessary to, you know, have compassion. Treat people how you want to be treated. And eventually, during our exchange, she softened and actually started making jokes with me. So could that have just been her personality? We don't know how life has beat this woman up. I don't know how life has beat this woman up. It could just be a bad day or a damn bad life. I don't know. But from the looks of things, I'm wagering on life. Was that a bad joke? Or was that a dad joke? <laughs> okay, I'm corny. The point was, I would have matched her energy and I would have disconnected from source, messing up my vibration. And I would have just gave her another reason to continue to have a bad day. You ain't got to sh on somebody that's already been sh on, you know what I'm saying? Especially if that's not your vibe and it's not. And I potentially, instead of being another problem in her day, became something that made her smile. And I didn't have to go out of my way, I just was myself. Instead of matching her energy, I made her match mine. This couple was walking down the street with their baby in a stroller. Why were they in the street with the stroller? It's none of my business. What was my business was to make sure that I went all the way to the other side of the street to make sure they felt comfortable. They knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I wouldn't accidentally hit them. And we need to go out of our way and think about other people and treat them the way that we want to be treated, regardless of how they treat us, because we don't know. Oh, I absolutely love it. Stay lame. Men, stay lame. Follow this brother's example. Brother as in male. Unity. I don't know their race, but stand united with your brother right here. Men don't want to pay you attention until you don't pay them attention. But that's, that's not this. This is I appreciate this comment. More young men and old men and men in the middle. They need to practice showing women that they like that they like them. Every female is enough. Every female doesn't need to be treated like a, especially if you find one that you like. 99% of the women out here are out here trying to be good women. They think being a good woman is what's going to get the man. But there's also a handful out there that's out here getting a swerve on. And you treat the swerves accordingly. But everyone isn't a swerver. A byproduct of every man treating me like a, was me becoming a swerver. I had to swerve in and out of these avenues because I couldn't get nobody to settle on the street with me. I'm trying to be solid, but everybody treat me like a swerver. I hate calling myself a, but I was out here. So we gonna say I was swerving and I didn't want to swerve. I was trying to walk straight and narrow, but nobody would let me. But if I had a good dude like this, who was down with being a lame and let me know he actually liked me, Instead of coming back 10 years later, sliding in my DMs like, damn, you married now? Yeah, you missed out on a good one. Because I'm a damn good wife. But you tried to swerve on me. So yes, I appreciate the lame men out there. Keep being lame and keep treating women the way they, de 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 the way they deserve to be treated. Let's level up, men.
too many of y'all are out there playing a role. These images on TV, these images you see in your community, the guy who has all the girls, the player, he ain't sh Are you an ain't Because if you are an ain't sh not the commenter, the commenter's dope, but you. If you're genuinely an ain't sh go find them swerves to swerve with. Leave the real women alone. Stop breaking a real woman down because you want to be out here on your ain't sh And I get it, there's a place for you too. But stop breaking women's spirits by being a dog ass especially if that ain't really who you are and you know those images are on purpose i always got to get on my soapbox those images are images are on purpose to break our community to keep us separated to keep our children fatherless to keep our women out here thinking there's something wrong with us and so they keep building themselves up to keep our men thinking they're perfectly fine so they can continue to stay dumbed down and i'm not saying dumbed down i'm saying in dumbed down do better and you keep being lame Hey, can we talk criminal behavior? What's good, y'all? I'm Lonnie Appleton. If you have a couple of minutes, I have a couple of messages. Man, I'm just sitting here thinking 99% of the people who do criminal stuff aren't criminals. Y'all already know a cheater and a cheat are two different things to me. A hoe and hoe mentality are two different things to me. And someone who committed a crime and a criminal are two different things to me. A lot of people out here committing crimes are situational. Oh, colonizing looking ass. Colonized. I ain't no colonizer. I'm a colonized. And they colonized the fuck out of me. Usa. Anyway, I was watching my video and it's talking about how people ain't really making no money out here. And then it made me think about my childhood and all the criminal activities that I partook in because of my situation. I'm an 80s baby, so you already know what that consists of. If you don't, go watch New Jack City. I had quite a few pookies in my family. I am product of a pookie and a pookie yet. I had a conversation with my mom and I guess I could disclose this because she's no longer here. And I don't think we should be ashamed of things that we struggle with. I don't look down on people who struggle with addiction. Everybody struggles with some sort of addiction. You need that cup of coffee to get you going every day. You're an addict. So how dare you look down on somebody else who has an addiction that you don't necessarily approve of. Cut that coffee out. Let me see how you go. You're going to be like... <sighs> So don't drink your coffee and be quiet. Anyway, my mom told me she didn't start smoking crack until 1980. I was like, mom, I was born in 81. That makes me a crack baby. You ain't no crack baby. Mama do the math, but maybe that's why I'm so brilliant. Anyway, I grew up in lack and I did a lot of stuff to try to get stuff. I've stolen, I've sold drugs, I've written bad checks. Damn, do I admit that? I know the statute of limitations is over. But I care about how y'all view me. Shall I remain closeted about my past to not lose followers? Nah. I'm authentic as fuck. And I did some fuck shit in my past. Dang, now I gotta edit the cuss words out. But yeah, I, I did what I needed to do to survive. I did what I needed to do to eat. I grew up in a crack house. Well, I did a stint in a crack house. And during that stint, I realized I'm not old enough to get a job. So the only way I can eat is if I sell drugs. So my dad gave me $30 to get a bus pass to get to and from school. And I took that $30 and flipped it. And thus, my career as a drug dealer began. I'm not glamorizing it, but I'm not ashamed of my past. I'm not ashamed and I don't demonize anyone who has to do what they got to do to survive. And that's the point of this video. Half of these people who are sitting in jail for life don't have criminal mentality. They had to do what they had to do to survive. And the system's set up that way. They break us by keeping us broke. Still there? 